Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to give my review of SummerSlam 1997. Starting off the evening we go to our first match of the night. It is Hunter Hearst Helmsley versus Mankind in a steel cage match. Number one I thought this was a, this was a great opening matchup for SummerSlam 97. Back and forth matchup between both Helmsley and Mankind. Mankind was keeping the pace of the match. Mankind then applies a mandible claw on Hunter as well. Hunter then gets out of that hits a suplex. Off the top of the cage on Mankind, it looked absolutely devastating. Triple H then gets his leg caught in the ropes. Mankind then goes to escape the cage, but China slams the door right into Mankind's face. Mankind then gets up, hits a double arm DDT on Hunter on a chair. Mankind then hits an elbow drop off the top, row, the top of the cage on uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And then Mankind ultimately escapes the cage, and your winner of the match is Mankind. A couple of things I'm going to say about this matchup, man. Number one, this was a great opening matchup for SummerSlam 97, like I had said. Um, and especially it being a steel cage match. And the other thing, too, is there was a lot of, like, rivalries, if you will, with Mankind. But I, th I think the one that people don't talk about a lot is Mankind's rivalry with Triple H. I mean, they had a lot of good, notable matches, man. And honestly, for what it's worth, yeah, Triple H kind of came out more of the victor in those matches with Mankind. But at the same time, too, I mean, Mankind, man, I mean, absolute, absolute legend. You can't knock the guy for what he's done for professional wrestling in his career. You can't. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. Even after the match was over, you see Mankind kind of sitting there and knows that, like, what he just went through with Triple H. And, I mean, him hitting that elbow drop off the top of the cage, straight out of Jimmy Snooker's book that, you know, the Superfly that he landed on Don Morocco, it was just absolutely insane, man. Even commentary was talking about it. Vince was talking about it when Jimmy Snuka jumped off the cage and hit the Superfly on uh, Don Morocco. Just absolutely insane. This was a really good opening matchup for SummerSlam 97. And hats off to Mankind for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Goldust versus Brian Pillman. I thought it was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Goldust and Pillman. With Pillman keeping the pace of the match. Goldust and Pillman both exchanged in the middle of the ring. Both Pillman and Goldust hit a humongous botch in this match. But Goldust ultimately hits a roll-up on Brian Pillman, pinning him for the three. And your winner of the match is uh, Goldust. Hats off to Goldust for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the Godwins versus the Legion of Doom. I thought this was a relatively good matchup. Back and forth matchup between both teams with... The Legion of Doom keeping the pace of the match. And LOD ultimately hits the uh, pile driver finish on Godwins. Pin them for the three. And your winners of the match are LOD. A couple things I'm going to say about this matchup too. Number one, it was a decent matchup. Godwins were a decent tag team. Obviously the Road Warriors, Legion of Doom, phenomenal tag team. I mean, legends. The only negative thing I'll say about this matchup is that I wish Legion of Doom ended up hitting the Doomsday device rather than the Paw Driver finish. Because the Doomsday device is just absolutely insane of a finish. But that probably be the only bad thing I'll say about this match. But all in all, hats off to LOD for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is for the European Championship. It is going to be Ken Shamrock versus the British Bulldog. I thought it was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Shamrock and the Bulldog with Shamrock keeping the pace of the match. Bulldog then throws dog food on Sh onto Shamrock on the outside. Shamrock then grabs the dog food can, crushes it over uh, the Bulldog's head. And the uh, referee ends up seeing it. And your winner of the match is the British Bulldog by disqualification. Hats off to the British Bulldog for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the Disciples of Darkness versus Loss. Barakas. I thought it was an okay matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Disciples of Darkness and Lost Barakas with Disciples of Darkness keeping the pace of the match. Nation of Domination are ringside. And then all-out fight breaks out between the Nation Domination, Disciples of Darkness, and Lost Barakas. Ahmed Johnson hits a devastating powerbomb on James from the Disciple of Darkness on the outside. It looked absolutely brutal. Then Lost Barakas goes for the cover. Pins for the three. And your winners of the match are Los Barakas. Hats off to Los Barakas for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Owen Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. 
Number one, I thought this was a great matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Owen Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin with Owen keeping the pace of the match. Austin then hits a Luthez press on Owen Hart. Austin then hits a powerbomb on Owen as well. Owen then hits an elbow drop on Austin. Owen then hits a devastating power driver on Austin as well. And honestly, that power driver could have ended Stone Cold Steve Austin's career, which I'll get to at the end of this. Um, but Austin somehow hits a roll-up on Owen Hart, pinning him for the three, and your winner of the match. And at that time, new WWE Intercontinental Champion is Stone Cold Steve Austin. A couple of things I'm going to say about this matchup. Number one, like I had stated, man, this was a great matchup. And at a time where the Intercontinental Championship actually meant something for WWE. The pile driver that Owen Hart landed on Stone Cold Steve Austin in this match was bad. Very bad. To a point where, you know, if... It, it could have gone horribly wrong. To a point where Stone Cold Steve Austin, A, probably would never walk again. B, and probably never wrestle again. Um, and this was something that Stone Cold Steve Austin touched based on in many documentaries and stuff like that and different shows that he was on, talking about this incident that he had with Owen Hart. And I think, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin obviously respected Owen, um, and a lot of people in the industry respected Owen Hart. And I don't think Owen Hart meant any ill will when he landed this pod driver on Stone Cold Steve Austin. But it was always something where, you know, Steve Austin would always say that Owen, you know, never gave him an apology for what he did. So I don't know if it was more or less animosity between both Owen and Stone Cold Steve Austin. I have no idea. All I know was is it was a great matchup. Um, but the pile driver that Owen Hart landed on Stone Cold Steve Austin at SummerSlam 97 could have been the end of Stone Cold Steve Austin's career that night. Luckily, you know, yes, he got injured, but it wasn't severe enough where he wouldn't walk again, where he wouldn't wrestle again, and he went on to have a phenomenal, insane career. But this was that one night where Stone Cold Steve Austin could have, that could have been it, where he wouldn't have walked again and would never would have wrestled again after that matchup. So, again... Crazy matchup, very good matchup. You know, the pile driver was absolutely insane, but hats off to Stone Cold Steve Austin for getting the win in this matchup and at that time becoming the new Intercontinental Champion. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is the main event of SummerSlam 1997. It is The Undertaker versus Bret Hart for the WWE Championship with a special guest referee, Shawn Michaels. Number one, I thought this was a great matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Taker and Bret Hart with Taker keeping the pace of the match. Paul Bear is here. Undertaker then goes to attack Paul Bear. Owen Hart and uh, Brian Pillman from the Hart Foundation are here as well. Bret and Shawn Michaels kind of had a scuffle throughout the entire match. They couldn't really agree on anything. To a point where Bret goes to spit on Shawn Michaels in the middle of the ring. Shawn then uh, gets upset, grabs a chair, goes to hit Bret Hart with the chair, but instead hits the Undertaker. Bret then goes for the cover, pins for the three. And your winner of the match, and at that time, new WWE Champion is Bret Hart. A couple of things I'm going to say about this match as well. Some are saying 1997, man. Number one, this main event was absolutely fantastic. It told one hell of a story. Obviously, the animosity between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, one of the best rivalries in all professional wrestling, in my honest opinion. Um, and to have Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee in this match just made this match just absolutely great. I mean, it was absolutely awesome. The finish was crazy. I mean, with Brett spitting on Shawn Michaels, obviously it's going to tick Shawn Michaels off. He grabs a chair, goes to hit Bret Hart, then mistakenly hits Undertaker besides Bret Hart, and then Brett gets the cover for the 1-2-3. I mean, absolutely insane, man. SummerSlam 1997 as a whole, though, I'm going to have to sol probably give it a solid 7-7.5, seven, seven man, to be honest with you. The Owen Hart and Stone Cold Steve Austin match was another big seller for me um, at the, for this pay-per-view. I mean, that pile driver that Owen Hart landed on Steve Austin could have been completely detrimental to his uh, Steve Austin's career as well as his life. I mean, he could have been paralyzed from that pile driver and would have been paralyzed for the rest of his life. And we would have never seen Stone Cold Steve Austin inside a square circle ever again. Uh, the main event, obviously, I mean, Taker versus Bret Hart, I mean, it, awesome. Having Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee in that match just makes it all the more better. But um, all in all, I mean, SummerSlam 1997, I would have had to probably give it a solid seven. Maybe seven half, seven and a half at best. But this is my review of SummerSlam 1997. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful and remember, stay classic. Peace.